love this machine. I've already had to put this thing to work. Now if you're new to the channel or relatively new to the channel, this, believe it or not, is the oldest machine I've ever owned. Let me rephrase that. This is the machine that I've put the most hours and times on. When I was in fourth and fifth grade, my parents wanted to buy us four-wheelers or dirt bikes or something along those lines. They wanted to get us into the brap life. Saying that, initially I think my dad wanted to buy a dirt bike for me. He wanted to buy like a Yamaha TTR 230 or, or something along those lines. He probably knew I was going to be a tall kid and probably wanted me to grow into something and probably challenge myself as well. Now I'm not absolutely certain, but maybe my mom was like, you know what, maybe we should go with four wheelers. Everybody else was doing four wheelers. I don't exactly know. The only thing I do know is when I was in fifth grade, I received this. It wasn't a handout though. That's a huge thing that my parents taught me when I was very young. Before I get into the story on that, I just want to say that Joe and Gary, I sent out your stance today. You'll be getting them, they're super duper froggy fresh. I hope you guys like them. I also want to start tearing into this and seeing what we have to fix before the riding season. It's got a bad wheel bearing. And that's wheel bearing with an S because I have to replace both of them. There, there's one on each side of the four wheeler. You have the left side and you have the right side. Plus I never really heard anybody just selling one wheel bearing. I kind of heard some rattling around and then I grabbed the tire and you can see it just shakes a little bit. I've owned it for 12 years. This is the first time we're ever doing this. That's really good. Say something. I took the first part off the brake assembly. Inside that drum smells like old urine. Wow. Oh. This is going to need more work than I imagined. That's where the smell is coming from. figured that I'd need the jack and not jack stands because because I thought that I wouldn't have to do anything like this. But not only are the wheel bearings shot, but now it looks like this whole brake assembly has to be reassessed, cleaned out, and gone over. Are you kidding me? I got that stuff on my face? I like how the first thing that we check is like one of the worst things. Here I try to talk you all up to the viewers, make you look real good, and then you do this on me. You actually shit on me. Have you seen that stuff? Have you seen this? I'm going to have to clean this up. I'm going to have to pick everything up, push this thing outside, and pressure wash it. You can't, you can't work like this. At least I can't work like this. <laughs>
here's what's going on. I'm actually going to go live in like 10 seconds. You obviously won't see that on this video, but if you stopped in on the live stream, leave that in the comment section below. I'd like to see you again. The live stream went extremely well. I got my whole rear brake assembly apart. I'm going to clean this up extremely well. As you can see, there's still brake pads on my shoes. Now what I'm working on is trying to get this bearing out. And over here, we have another bearing under this seal. I just ordered the parts. Hopefully they come in very, very quickly. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to move this around if I have the rear end completely apart. Come on, shipping company. I know you can do it. It's really, really nice to have a machine that you don't really have that many problems with. Granted, this is a time-consuming wheel bearing replacement. But other than that, I'm, I'm really glad to see that the oil inside the differential was clean. Every machine I buy, every time, it seems like nobody changes the differential fluid. It's so easy, and it's like $6 for a quart of oil. You only need one and a half quarts. That's why I always break them loose by hand before I put that tool on. Because usually when you have something this, you know, old, and something that's gone through the mud as much as this thing has, I mean, I've, I've absolutely swamped this thing and had to rebuild the engine. That, that's not fun. But usually those, and even sometimes those, don't have enough torque to get the job done. Sometimes you need a little elbow grease. While we're talking about strategies, I also want to mention the screwdriver right here is shot. I'm using it as a punch. It's, it's no longer really a screwdriver. For any of you mechanics I want to try to critique. I really wish this thing didn't have this issue. Here's the rear end. I guess this wasn't too bad getting out. It's just compared to the Raptor 660, this thing's way more complicated. Holy smokes. Can you imagine? Don't drop that. That oil that came out of here was super clean, but then I mean real close, it looks like that. This thing is going to need a thorough washing. Just like when I fixed Justin's four-wheeler, this is all gonna be prep work. What happened was this seal here, the seal behind this bearing went, so that allowed a whole a whole bunch of dirt and crap and everything else to get in there and luckily it didn't make it inside the differential to start wearing out the, the gears and everything like that and then you have another seal over here which I'm going to replace as well all prep work all prep work bearings should be like a 10 minute thing you pop them in and then you can just reassemble the only unfortunate part is preparing takes a long time I don't like cleaning I like getting the stuff dirty I like going riding I like using the things somebody else can pressure wash them are you in the same boat? Do you agree? Cleaning. Cleaning is the enemy. Now I want to mention what I spoke about in the beginning of this video and that is my parents and I went in on this machine. My parents didn't strictly buy this machine for me. They didn't strictly put up all the money up front. My savings went into this as well. That's the way to do it. I'm not going to speak for my brother or my sister, but I feel like that really taught me a lesson. I was probably 11 at the time. This machine, I would, I would imagine back in the day, probably cost about $5,000, so I'm assuming that I put anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500 on it. Once I hit 13 years old, I don't think I asked for my parents for another dollar in my life. It, it was all worked for, it was all hustled for. I gotta knock this bearing out. Just gonna lock it up on the vise, pop it out. Hopefully it goes smoothly. There's our old bearing, junk. I need some paint, I always need paint.
It's getting later in the day. I want to wrap up this 3D Machines production. I'm going to mention this in the next couple uploads. Go to my channel and click the little bell icon. That's the notification icon. So that in the event that I go live that you guys will know right away. There are a couple people that were saying, hey, I didn't get the notification that you were going live. Click that bell. That'll fix that problem. The second thing is follow me on Twitter. It is at... YT3D Machines. I'll put it right here. I want to thank everybody that came to the live stream. I'm going to edit today's video. Tomorrow we have big plans. Very, very big plans. You, you don't want to miss that. It's something that's going to change about me. And then after this appointment, I hope to get back to the Bruin or even the BMW. I hope you guys enjoyed this 3D Machines production. Until tomorrow, 3D Machines out.